No other gym has a plush video viewing room. How about a little sauna to help make the weight? Or a jacuzzi? Is this some upscale health club? No, this is the Triple Threat Gym, built expressly for the Triple Threat Boxing Team. Welterweight Charles Murray, cruiserweight Alfred Cole, and star of the trio heavyweight Ray Mercer. They're all managed by 29-year-old Mark Roberts, who has confidence his investment will pay off. This gym was built for them. This is their gym. And it's with that pride that the fighters come in every day and know that they better push and push hard because they're going after it all. The luxury of having it all already here in the gym obviously hasn't hurt Ray Mercer's motivation for the ring. Oh, I love it, Clay. This is, this, is, uh, this is the ultimate gym. You know, I'm just proud to be a part of it, you know. Uh, this gym, I, it's going to be here for a long time, and, and I want to be, I want to just put my, put my mark on the wall. Mercer did make his mark as an amateur, beating a Korean in Seoul, Korea, to become one of the few American boxers to bring home the gold. But under the Mercer plan, that success was a step toward others. It, it's like uh, graduation to the pros. You know, you went all the way in the amateur, so you, you, you got to go all the way. It's only one more, one more step, and that's the pros. You go all the way in the, in the pros, and you can't have number satisfaction out of life. In boxing's current heavyweight derby, Mercer may have to wait his turn, but he's confident of what will happen when it comes. My goal is now to be the heavyweight champion of the world. That's my only goal, and that will come true. Well, his toughest test so far will be against Burt Cooper with the NABF title at stake. Last time we saw Cooper Gill on CBS 1987, he was 16-1 at the time, was stopped by Carl Latruth Williams. Since that time, uh, about with uh, drugs and alcohol, and yet he's back with an impressive win over Orla Norris. Well, Tim, that was his biggest battle, beating drugs and alcohol. The reports from the gym is, is the old Bird Cooper. Now, look at the power that Cooper has here when he's knocking out Willie to, to win. He can get any heavyweight out of there if he hits him. Now, let's take another look with Andre McCall. At that time, a pretty good heavyweight. Here we watch Bird Cooper, one punch, and the guy starts, and that's it. If that's the Bird Cooper that shows up, we're going to have an interesting fight. All right, well, we will be joined by ringside reporter Dan Jiggetts. One of the things he'll be doing today, talking to top-ranked Evander Holyfield. And the fight coming up momentarily here on CBS Sports Sunday after this. Back in Atlantic City, and uh, we're awaiting the Ray Mercer, Burt, Burt Cooper uh, heavyweight bout. Right now, speaking of heavyweights, two of them here are Dan Jiggetts with top-ranked Evander Holyfield. All right, Dan, you know, Evander, your fight coming up with Buster Douglas now was moved from the 21st of September to October 25th. How is that going to affect your training, and has it had any negative effect on you at all? Well, I was training about three weeks before I got the information that the fight was going to be um, set back. But it should, it should uh, just give me an opportunity to, um, to work on something that for strength and my flexibility. Now, let's take it to October 25th. You walk out of the ring as the heavyweight champion of the world. Who's next on your dance card then? Well, right now, my promotion group main event is handling that. Of course, it's either going to be Tyson or George Foreman. And, and with Dan, Dan said... Um, or whatever would be feasible to me for a monetary value would be the right person that he would choose. Okay, well, very best of luck to you. Right now, we're going to throw it back over to Tim Ryan. Tim? All right, Dan. Well, uh, before boxing action, uh, we are now taking you to our studio. 35 seconds remain in the round. The blood from the mouth of Ray Mercer came on an early punch from Burt Cooper in black, the champion. But Mercer, just seconds after that, sent Cooper to the canvas with a big right hand. We'll bring that back to you at the end of this round. And Tim, that is an angry cut that Ray Mercer has in his mouth. And that came from a Cooper uppercut. There's that uppercut again inside. So Cooper got off the canvas and has rallied well, although Mercer has carried most of the round, including the knockdown, of course. Final seconds, round one. And let's go back and see the knockdown punch from Ray Mercer, that big straight right hand, Gil. Right on the button, Tim. He had been taking some punishment inside, and he landed that long right hand. Let's switch things around. So a dramatic start, a furious pace established early by these two heavyweights. Mercer came in at 222 and a half for this 16th fight of his pro career at age 29. Burt Cooper came in at 217 pounds, a record of 22 and five. 
with one no decision. He is 24 years of age, and Mercer, as uh, most of you know, uh, starting his boxing career late as an amateur in the Army at age 23, now a 29-year-old pro. The three-knockdown rule is in effect here in New Jersey and under NABF rules. The only thing that differs from the normal New Jersey rules, there is no standing eight count, which normally applies in this state. The count will continue after the bell in all rounds, including the final 12th, if it goes that far. Tim, that was a bombs away first round. Both guys were hurt in the round, and Ray Mercer has that angry cut, split bottom lip. And Percy Richardson did a good job work, working on that cut between rounds. And that cut occurred in the very first few seconds of the fight. And was followed, as we said, not long after by the knockdown by Mercer of Burt Cooper. Tim, both of these guys are capable of getting you out with one punch. Both guys. Mercer with 11 knockouts in his 15 victories. Cooper with 19 KOs and 22 wins. Here's that uppercut again by Cooper. That's the punch that busts you up, Tim. Uppercuts. Now Mercer backing Cooper into the corner. Cooper trying to bull his way out. And again, throwing those uppercuts inside. The referee is Tony Perez from New York. Judges are Sid Rubenstein of Albany, New York. Phil Newman of Bayonne, New Jersey. Vincent Rainoni of Hackensack, New Jersey. again from that split lip on the face of Ray Mercer. Tim Burt Cooper is very, very determined in this fight. He's taking some good shots and he's punching back. Well, we mentioned a guy who was off to a great start early in his career, 16 and one before the loss to Carl Williams. And in effect on a mini comeback, a good win over Orlin Norris, Norris, a highly regarded young heavyweight for this NABF crown. That was in February of this year, an eighth-round stoppage of Norris. For Ray Mercer, a step up in class against Cooper, at least in terms of dangerous punching power. He's not been in against anybody who can punch like Cooper. I like the way Mercer was putting his punches together, Tim. Both vicious punches and in combination. And he missed two, but at least he came back with the hook. Under a minute to go, round two. Under the 32nd mark we go, and the second round is scheduled for 12, and a glory there, both fighters landing. Mercer uh, leaning on Cooper, using his additional weight, pin him against the ropes momentarily. Five and a half pound advantage for Ray Mercer. Coming to the end of round two. Uh, Cooper's corner scored a knockdown. He took the stool out and he tried to sit down again. <laughs> Could be a little disconcerting for the fighter. Round number three, Gil Clancy with Tim Ryan. Here live in Atlantic City on CBS Sports Sunday, Ray Mercer, the Olympic champion in gold, going after his 16th victory without a defeat as a professional facing the NABF champion, Burt Cooper, just missed with a big windmilling right hand. Both of these guys are throwing bombs. Mercer to the body on that one. And Tim, you know, the strategy in, in Cooper's the camp, they, they thought if they can get Mercer into a later round that, that Cooper will just take him apart. You know, Mercer just hasn't had that tough competition. Uh, Cooper's been in with much, much better fighters. There's that quick right hand of Mercer's. Though. That's the one that gets you out of there. Mercer's uh, best uh, win so far in terms of experienced fighters, Ozzy Ocasio and Kimmy Odom. He'll be seeing in a couple of weeks against Razor Ruddick here on CBS. Did he 12 get, rounds with Odom. You mentioned uh, Ozzy Ocasio. He's no puncher. Cooper is a big puncher. This is the test for Mercer. See if he can take these punches and come back. And he has been nailed three good, and he is fighting back, fighting well. Cooper with wins over Henry Tillman, Oscar Holman, Orlin Norris. And if you join this late, Mercer has Cooper down in round number one. And Tim, this has been a hot pace, and both of these guys look like they're tired, and it's only the third round, but it has been a scorching pace. Seems 
seems to me that Cooper can come inside with that left hook to the body, Tim. He walks in, but he doesn't throw the punch. But I guess he's worried about that straight right hand of Mercer. Staying pretty close to Mercer right now, throwing some uppercuts inside, but not terribly active at the moment. But Tim, that's the kind of punches that Cooper should be showing, throwing those short uppercuts that would bust you up. And that lip looks pretty angry. Under a minute to go in round three. Beautiful combination by Cooper. Slid over to the right, left hand, right hand. Goodly contingent of Ray Mercer fans on hand here, as always, because he trains up the road in Newark. Lives in Union, New Jersey. Ed Cooper trains for this fight down, down in Florida, but he's from Sharon Hill, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia, also nearby. Right to the head got through from Mercer. Cooper firing back, but Mercer keeps the pace up. Four live from Caesars Atlantic City. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy watching this NABF light, this NABF heavyweight championship bout. Burt Cooper in black, Ray Mercer in gold. Tim, they may be fighting like lightweights the way they're throwing these punches, but these are two tough, strong heavyweights. Been a very fast pace for heavyweights through the first three rounds. Tremendous flurry at the end of round three. Both fighters landing scoring punches that hurt. Cooper seems very confident. Big right hand, another. To the head of Mercer. Well, the, the question has been answered. Ray Mercer can take and another punch. one. Boy, can he ever. Three big shots by Cooper. Tim, and Mercer just kept shooting punches back. You can't get hit much harder than that, Tim. That, that's enough to discourage Burt Cooper. He hit him with his best shots, and the guy's still standing there. Cooper looked very confident at the beginning of this round. We've got him behind on our cards in two close rounds through two and three. Of course, he was knocked down in round one by a Mercer right hand. But he still seemed to be uh, very confident at the beginning of this round. One would wonder now, after landing those big shots and seeing Mercer come forward instead of backward, what Cooper's thinking now. Then that has to take something out of Bert Cooper mentally. Again, the fighters staying close to each other, uh, neither wanting to give the other that punching rate. But yeah. Cooper scoring well inside. Those those uh, short little punches that bust you up, Tim. That's the experience of Bert Cooper, the more experienced fighter. Looks like a little snap has gone from Ray Mercer's punch, Tim. They get it back, but a little snap is gone right now. See that right foot go forward when he threw that right hand? And again, to go. It's like blowing a baseball, Tim. Cooper continues to work the inside. Mercer leaning on him, and Cooper just taking advantage of that. They're throwing the punches up inside. Cooper is the more relaxed guy inside. Can you see Mercer step back and take that big breath? He's a little tired right now. And again, when he threw the right hand, that right foot came forward. That's an indication that the legs are, are tired. Under 30 seconds we go in the fourth round. This is scheduled for 12, the North American title at stake. Good left hand by Mercer and a right behind it. Cooper wobbled. Mercer banging down to the body. And Cooper's still there, Tim, but he's ready to go. Another right hand. Ready to go, Tim. Bell better in for Cooper's sake. Straight right hand landed. A flurry by Mercer at the end of round four may impress the judges after Cooper on our card had uh, won most of that round. So that may be a round that tilts to Mercer here with a hometown crowd all cheering as he was throwing those punches, many of them blocked by Cooper. Into round five. And Tim, both of these guys have taken heavy punishment. They both want this one badly. You know, it surprises me now, right in the beginning of the round, when Mercy should be rested, he threw that right hand, and that foot came forward again. Well, there's a lot more than just the North American title at stake for these guys in this interesting heavyweight division. They both know they can move up into that heavyweight derby. Mercer. Nailed him with that right hand again, Got Tim. Got right through. And he's got him hurt now with that left hook. Everybody, 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 
Tim, win or lose, Bert Cooper has shown me that he's a formidable heavyweight right now. Take, he's taking a great punch. He's giving out some good punches. What a fight this is. As we mentioned earlier, Tim, the fight plan of Bert Cooper was to tie Ray Mercer out. In the corner, they're telling him, lean on him, push him. Take that stamina away from him. Now, the bigger man, Mercer, has actually done most of that leaning, but Cooper has been willing to stay there and throw those little punches inside, like right here. Uh, inside, Cooper is very, very relaxed. Mercer just doesn't have the experience inside. He's very dangerous, and he has some punching room. He needs that little bit of room. He can push Cooper off get that punch from him. And Cooper's walking in without throwing punches. I think he can throw that left hook to the body coming in. And a minute to go on the fifth. Pace finally slowing. It's been furious for four. Well, again, Ray Mercer stepped back and took that deep breath, Tim. One good thing about Mercer, he hits you and hurts you, Tim. He's on your case. Now, finally, Cooper pulls out of there and starts to jab. We haven't seen much of that. Of course, Mercer wants him at this range. You know, Tim, as a guy gets tired, it's much easier to hit him with a jab. Most of these guys start out by jabbing and forget about him in the late round. Now is the time to start using that jab, both guys. Uppercut landed by Mercer, snapping back ahead of Cooper. Combination inside by Mercer. to the end. Bam! Cooper came off the stool with a little nick over his left eyebrow that they worked on. Eddie Aliano with a cut man in his corner. But he had a big smile for Mercer as though he's enjoying the combat. They're halfway through the fight. And Mercer again with a big combination. Rocks Cooper back to the ropes. Well, Tim, when Mercer nails you with one, you can expect another four or five to come right after it. Boy, Cooper has taken some punch in this fight. It looks like the cut is closer to the corner of the left eye. And a lot of the blood again from that cut on the mouth of Mercer that was suffered by him back in round one. And the last right hand that uh, Bert Cooper threw and, and landed really affected Mercer. Really moved back from that touch. First time I've seen that happen in the fight. That, if that lip gets much worse, then the doctor's going to have to take a look at it. It's a pretty good slice over the left eye of Cooper now that he's close enough to see it's right on the eyelid. And it's bothering his vision, Tim. You can see him blinking and squinting. Right close together. Watch the big left hook by Bert Cooper. But Mercer just keeps coming forward. Tim, he's just walking forward. He's losing his leverage. Well, anytime he slides that right foot up. Cooper has just been unable to back up Ray Mercer. to go in round six. Those are trying those short punches inside, but not as proficient as Cooper at it. Skill still to be learned by the big young Olympic champion. Well, we keep calling him young. He's 29, but young as a professional. Then instead of walking forward the way he just did then, he should shuffle forward. That way he can keep his balance for Cooper punches. Good solid right to the chin of Mercer. Again, just no effect. Uh, every round the last 20 seconds, Mercer has rallied. Let's see what happens now. Mercer's getting hurt a little bit now, Tim. Cooper, two good body shots in that exchange. Final seconds, round six. But 
more importantly, the swelling on the left upper jaw of Ray Mercer. We have him ahead in the fight, but we gave round six to Burt Cooper, and there's quite a bit of swelling. They tried to take it down with the end swell, the little uh, frozen piece of metal they used to reduce swelling, but it had no effect. Meanwhile, they did a good job on the cut of the over the left eye of Burt Cooper. And Ray Mercer looked real weary going back to his corner, Tim. The Cooper people said if they can get this fight into the seventh round, they expected it to be all Cooper. And you know, the, the swelling on uh, Ray Mercer's jaw reminds me of when Joe Lewis fought Mike Schmeling. A long time ago, Tim, but the same thing. That jaw was way up in the air. I wasn't at that fight, Bill, were you? No, Tim, but there's always movies, you know. Come on here, you know, fella. This is round number seven, scheduled for 12, remember, the North American title at stake. Cooper has been a live guy right through this entire fight. Even though we have him behind on points, he was knocked down in round number one. But he has come out for the start of each round with a lot of vim and vigor. Mercer has tried a new tactic now, and he's slapping Cooper with his right hand. Whether that's going to disconcert Bird or not, let's wait and see. Maybe he's slapping with that right hand. Well, he's aiming at that cut over the left eye of Cooper. Little short rights to that damaged eye. Eddie Perez reaches in to try to break it. The Cooper may get the same idea this time. There's the, anytime Mercer lands one big one, he's right back in there winging. Oh, did he get nailed by Craig Cooper with the right hand by Cooper? But Mercer just seems to shrug those off. An impressive display of an ability to take a punch, except for that swelling on the left jaw that still could be a factor. Senses that Bert Cooper is coming alive and Ray Mercer is starting to wear down. Under a minute to go, round seven. Uppercut lead, got through, a left behind it. Anytime Mercer nails you with one, you can expect four or five more to come. And boy, that's what's been happening. Just a smile from Cooper, like, boy, this is fun. Hard to believe, isn't it, folks? Boy. Under 30 seconds to go, round seven of a grueling heavyweight battle. Both fighters taking a lot of punishment. No quarter being asked. Cooper's problem this round is he hasn't thrown enough punches. Another right hand landed by Cooper. But again, Mercer firing right back. Round number eight of a winding of a heavyweight battle here in gold. Ray Mercer, the Olympic champion, 15 and 0 as a pro, showing he can take a shot from Burt Cooper in the black trunks. Reminder that uh, coming up following CBS Sports Sunday, we'll be going to Memphis, Tennessee for the Federal Express St. Jude Classic with Tom Kite, the current leader at 15 under par. And a left from Mercer snaps back the head of Cooper. Here in round eight. And Tim, that left jaw of Ray Mercer, it just looks awful. Swollen up like a basketball now. A softball, anyhow. <laughs> well, we're told uh, from the corner reporter Dan Jiggets, uh, hearing the doctor saying apparently the jaw is not broken in his estimation. They have not taken a real close uh, look at uh, Mercer, but the swelling is apparent to all of us. Tim, the only way you can tell if that jaw is broken is if you x-rayed it. That'll have to wait. But the last round, I just didn't think that Bert Cooper threw enough punches. He allowed uh, Mercer to win the round. For him to get back into this fight, he's going to have to start winning punches. Combination scored by Cooper. Mercer pins Cooper in the corner briefly. He just can't back up. Another Mercer. right here by Mercer. Tim, the punishment these guys are taking, it's amazing. We know they're both good punches. folks up here cheering for Cooper for sure. And the swelling even worse now on that 
cheekbone or upper jaw of Mercer on the left side. Oh, right hand landed by Cooper right on it. Then when he gets hit with that punch, I start the wins. Meanwhile, cut man Eddie Aliano has continued to do a good job on the cut on the left eyelid of Cooper. It has not been a factor so far. Cooper lands a right there. Uh, Mercer lands a right to the ear of Cooper. Tim, I think that Cooper now could take Mercer outside. Seems that Mercer's just walking around the ring. I think he could paint the box a little bit. But he has to throw punches from outside. Cooper doesn't throw a punch unless he's really close. There he is again. He walks in. Final seconds of the eighth round. Tickets for word on uh, the condition of Mercer. Well, Tim, right now, the ring doctors took a look from down below, did not get into the ring to take a look at the jaw. He said, really, it's the cheek that he's concerned about, but right now, there's no real concern over it. I don't know. It looks pretty dangerous, though. Let's go back to you and Gil. All right, Dan. Well, one thing for sure, it must hurt just a little bit, but Ray Mercer has not been stopped once in this fight. He's just come forward, no matter what punishment he's taken, which has been considerable from Cooper. All right, now Cooper is fighting from outside. Tim threw a nice combination. He's bouncing a little bit. It's going to get more interesting now because when they land those big bombs from outside, a little more effective. Only knockdown occurred back in round one, scored by Mercer, and he just lands another good combination. One good thing about Mercer, he puts those punches together when he can. Again, uh, using that five-pound weight advantage and the height advantage to steer Cooper around. Tim, that was the home run ball that Cooper just threw in. He just missed. Just made up his mind to let it all hang out. Almost got burst around in here with that one punch. But again, it's the left hook against the straight right hand of Mercy. Who's going to land first? Big left hook by Mercy. guys are going to have a good night's sleep tonight. If they can sleep with pain, Tim. Right. If you just tuned in, it looked like this, and even better, through the first eight rounds. We're into round nine, scheduled for 12. Tremendous pace set by two heavyweights. We have Mercer comfortably ahead, but with the potential uh, here of the home run ball from Cooper and the damage to the left cheekbone it appears just above the left jaw side of the jaw of Ray Mercer Cooper with a cut on his left eyelid under a minute to go round number nine Tim if I was in Cooper's corner now I'd tell him get, take, take chances try to box this guy and nail him from outside right, right there is where he should be throwing the punches from he walks in he smothers his own punches Mercer seeming content to keep Cooper fairly close. Now he backs away, but most of his success has been from outside. Maybe that Mercer is tiring. Right hand scored by Cooper on that swollen left cheekbone. Caesars Atlantic City watching two Heavyweights putting on quite a show. Burt Cooper in black, Ray Mercer in gold. We're into the 10th, scheduled for 12. Tim, as tough a fight as this is, I wonder what Ray Mercer's thinking, because every time the bell rings, Cooper smiles at him. It does seem like Cooper has just been enjoying this combat right from the get-go. We've given him the last two rounds close on our card. There have been a lot of close rounds in this fight, Tim. But Mercer, again, Cooper lands the one big punch. But when Mercer lands one big one, he follows it up with three or four more. And that's what's giving him a lot of these close rounds. But uh, Cooper now should start trying to punch from outside a little bit. Right hand lead by Mercer was blocked by Cooper. That one gets through. And he wobbles Cooper there. Mercer picking up the pace with another flurry. Well, Tim, that's what he does when he nails it. Oh, he has him hurt badly now, Tim. If that doesn't get him out of I don't know what will. Cooper will not go down. He was down once in round number one, and he's been hit harder than that many times since. They may have been surprised by Mercer in round one. Now he's got himself planted and just refusing to go down.
with a right hand on that swollen jaw of mercy. And here comes Bert Cooper. up the pace at the beginning of this round when he thought he had Cooper in trouble. Sometimes, Tim, that can be the worst thing that can happen to you, especially when it's a, in a late round like this and they're both a little tired. Now, if Cooper has anything left and he could just stop bouncing around, he might be able to take Ray Mercer apart. Mercer resting now, no question. And here comes Bert Cooper walking forward again. And you see Mercer almost fell off his feet just leaning forward. Cooper's trying to use those legs, but Ray Mercer just won't let him out of there. You're watching this fight. We've talked a lot about the heavyweight division. It's got to be the best it's been in a lot of years. When you see these two guys, and you know that they're they're not even in the top ten. Mercer's in the top ten with the IBF. They're both headed that way for sure. It's really making this an exciting heavyweight scene. If I managed the guy, he wouldn't be in with either one of these guys, Tim. <laughs> he was a leading heavyweight, that's for sure. Final seconds of round number 10. Yeah, there'll be some uh, jaundiced views. Into the corner of Ray Mercer we go. Turn upside down, Norman. I can't get in the way Okay, you walk and just walk something other one. Squeeze it, squeeze it. Corner again, guys. Right away. Joe Rivas, his trainer, trying to pump him up. Eddie Aliano working on that cut. And don't forget that uh, following our boxing action here in Atlantic City, we'll be going to Memphis for the final round of the Federal Express St. Jude Classic. Tom Kite, the current leader, last report 15 under par, so they're shooting some birdies down in Memphis. And that's coming up next. Round 11. This is scheduled for 12. The North American title held by Burt Cooper at stake. But again, as we have said, much more importantly, the fact that these are two world contending heavyweights or about to be. And if this uh, fight goes the way it has, you can still say that about both guys after it's over, Gil. Absolutely, Tim. Both of these guys have showed me a tremendous amount. Both guys have taken tremendous punishment, and they can both punch. Very exciting heavyweights. Cooper landed a right hand on that cheekbone of Mercer, but Mercer again shrugs it off and fires back. And Tim, uh, Mercer just caught at that, at that jaw. It, it seems to might be bothering him. If Cooper, would, instead of just walking straight in, would faint one time, Tim, he can, catch, he can catch Ray Mercer leaning in because Ray's legs are not holding him that well right now. But Cooper just walks in there all the time. Mercer with Cooper backed up with a good combination. In the old days, the promoters would give a fighters in a fight like this a bonus after the fight. They certainly deserve something. What do you think, Tim? Well, yeah, I'd vote for that, but of course, it's not our money. And here's Mercer Clowney. Big right hand, and Cooper just shrugs it off. That hook landed by Mercer, and a big right hand again. Mercer finding some room to throw them. Cooper just won't move out of there. Those are scoring punches for Ray Mercer. And we have a head in our scorecard, at least. Cooper's legs are a little shaky right now, Tim. Took some tremendous punishment. And that's flurried by Ray Mercer. And a minute to go in round 11. to see the 
casino showroom at Caesars filled with boxing fans today. These people who came to see this fight are very involved in it. They are fight fans. A lot of them for Mercer and a lot of them for Cooper. Again, again, Cooper just hasn't been busy enough, Tim. Mercer wins the rounds by being more industrious, putting those punches together. I don't think that Cooper can win this fight now, Tim, unless he scores a knockout. Final seconds of round 11. Right hand landed by Cooper in the combination, but Mercer just keeps firing. Another big right hand by Cooper. Ray Mercer can definitely take a punch. In the corner of Burt Cooper, who has shown he can take him too. Forget the knockdown in round one. He bounced right back from that and has taken tons of punishment since. Keep your hands up. Listen, listen, sit here. Yeah, yeah. These are the kind of matchups fight fans and television people hope they're going to get. They turn out to be such an evenly matched fight between two competitive guys, and we're seeing it. Here's Ray Mercer. Bruised and battered warrior, but he is ahead on our cards with a round to go. Also battered on the far side, at least over the left eye, Bert Cooper. Final round. That's him in the... Uh Mercer's corner, they said, just don't make any mistakes. So they, they feel that he's winning the fight, same as we do, Tim. I just don't think he can lose now unless he gets knocked out. And that's taking nothing away from Bert Cooper. I thought he was fighting a tremendous fight. Ray Mercer yet to face defeat as a professional. The amateurs had 85 victories against only six losses. When Cooper's walking in, he's throwing a right-hand lead. And I'd, I'd like to see him faint that right-hand throw a hook from outside. About the best shot that he's got right now. Throw that left hook. He walks in, and he allows Mercer to get off first. I just wonder in the... Cooper's corner if they told him, Tim, that he needed to knock out to win this fight. Chico Rivas is trainer. Mercer managed by Mark Roberts and trained by Hank Johnson. Another combination by Mercer. Backed up Cooper, but that's all. Can he get this guy off his feet despite landing heavy, heavy blows? Tim, and you see Mercer, Lynn Mercer is very, very tired. But you know, that's the way a fighter should finish a fight. Give it everything you have. Don't save anything for tomorrow. And he's dancing around now, Tim. Under a minute to go, an impressive show by the Olympic champion, Ray Mercer. Talking about two guys who got themselves into shape for this fight, that's for sure. I'm sure that both gyms were confident that their guys were going to win, Tim, and why not? They both put up such a great performance. Ray Mercer's going to leave here looking like Dizzy Gillespie when he's hitting a high note. The way that cheek is puffed up, but he is fighting confidently here. And still throwing heavy leather. Staying up for Burt Cooper's efforts if it turns out to be in a losing cause. The guys in the top ten aren't going to be looking to fight Burt Cooper. You're right about that, Tim. Look at Ray Mercer. Whoa, he nearly nailed the referee. Mercer was waving to the crowd and just missed the referee. Lopez when he threw a punch. Perez, rather. We'll be back with the decision here in Atlantic City in a moment. And now from ring announcer Michael Buffer.
Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official scoring from Caesars Atlantic City. Vinny Renoni scores about 119 to 108. Bill Newman has it, 117 to 110. And Sid Rubenstein scores it, 117 to 106. For the winner, he's still undefeated, still has two titles. Used to this. We've only got a minute to talk to you, unfortunately, but it was a tremendous fight. Cooper had to be a lot tougher than you could possibly have imagined, and here he is congratulating you. He was. Best fight I ever had, bro. Yeah, man. All right. All right. Hey, Princess. I don't think Burt Cooper is going to be out of the heavyweight picture, do you, Ray? No, I don't think so. But you're very much in it. I got a lot of work to do. Yeah, well, you've got a sore jaw there to deal with for a while. You'll sleep well tonight. All right. That very heals it. Thank you, Ray. Congratulations to the Olympic champion, Ray Mercer. He's now 16-0 as a pro and the new NABF heavyweight champion. For Gil